this session of our study of the spiritual disciplines is going to be a little bit shorter, and that's because I've got uh, a cool activity for you guys to do as a group or, or maybe personally if you're doing this by yourself. Uh, at the end of this, it's, it's going to take a little bit more than just a few minutes, and it's going to be really good, so make sure you do that. Um, and the link will be in the description of how you can do that um, of this video, or it'll be on the app, or, or however you're watching this video, you'll be able to find it pretty easily so you can do it. So we're just going to jump right into our spiritual discipline for today since it's going to be shorter. Spiritual discipline to talk about today is going to be serving. Service. Christian service. Serving God and serving others. I've got three texts for us to start it off. We're going to be reading in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. So if you've got your Bible with you, turn to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. And then turn to Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. And Acts 17, verses 24 through 25. That's three spots. Hebrews 9, 14. Deuteronomy 13, 4. And then Acts 17, 24 through 25. I want us to, to look at these, to not just hear them and then have them go one ear in one ear and out the other, but to really look at this, to study it, to think about it, and what these three mean, how they relate to the spiritual discipline of service. So here's he Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So what this text is, is relating to the, the spiritual discipline of service, how it's doing that, is look at what it says about the why Jesus died. It says that one of the reasons that he, that he saved us, that he died on the cross, was resurrected and did all of that for us, was to save us so that, what? We could serve the living God. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. So one of the purposes that Jesus was sent to earth was so that we could serve God. Now, go to the, the verse that I gave you in Deuteronomy. It should be Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4. We're going to see very simply here what, what we're trying to get across. Here's verse 4. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and serve Him and hold fast to Him. Let me say that again. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him, and keep His commandments, and obey His voice, and you shall serve Him and hold fast to Him." So that's right there. It's very plain and simple. If Hebrews 9.14 wasn't enough for you, then that right there is a plain and simple command. Straight out of the law of God, you shall serve God. Did you see that there? Did you, did you catch that? You shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. That's at the end of verse 4. Plain and simple command from Scripture. Serve God. And the third verse that we're going to look at is going to be two verses, actually, in Acts chapter 17, verses 24 through 25. So turn there with me, and we're going to read that and talk about a very interesting verse here. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. So did we catch that there in, in verse 24 and 25? Especially in verse 25, it says, nor is he served by human hands. Meaning, God is not served by anything we can do. Okay. Hold on a minute. The Bible commands us to serve God. It says one of the reasons Jesus died was to, so that we could serve God. But right here, Paul in this sermon, he says, God is not served by human hands because He doesn't need anything. And so we can't give God something that He doesn't have or that He needs because He has everything and He doesn't need anything. So we can't really serve Him. So let me, let me ask you this question then. And that's going to get to the meat of what we want to talk about for this session. Is What do you think are some reasons that you would tell someone to do something for you that doesn't benefit you? So why would you tell someone to do something for you if it doesn't benefit you at all? If you don't get anything out of it? That's, that's really the question we're getting at here with, with what God's doing is, is why? If God is not served by us when we serve God, then why command it? Why tell us to do it? Why send your son with one of the purposes of him coming is to serve God? I think the main one is benevolence right? It's that you want someone else to get something out of doing that thing 
for you. Right? It's like, like think about a kid that, that loves their mom and their mom always cooks them dinner and, they, and that kid loves their mom. And so one day that kid decides, I'm going to make my mommy some food. And so the kid goes and, and get, gets out two pieces of bread, makes a giant mess, trying to make a sandwich for his mom. And he brings it to his mom, right? And, and, and is, does his mom need that? No, because his mom can make her, her own food, right? And is she going to enjoy the sandwich? Mm, who knows, right? <laughs> who knows if the kid makes it, right? We, the mom's not going to get anything out of this. But the reason that the, the son did that for the mom is because he loves his mom and he wants to serve his mom because his mom made him food. And he loves his mom and so he wants to do that for her. She doesn't need that. But yet, the reason that he does that, the reason that she likes that, the reason that she enjoys that is because it puts on display the love of her, her son or her daughter for her as a mother. God doesn't need our service. He doesn't need anything, Acts 17, 25 says. He's a maker of heaven and earth. There's nothing he doesn't have, or, or there's nothing that he would need. But he, he commands us to serve because he knows that it's best for us. That what it does is it, is it communicates our love for him to him. And in doing so, that is going to bless us. One of the, one of the greatest quotes that I've heard in a while says this. It'll be up on the screen for you. Prizing is the essence of praising. Let me say it again. Prizing is the essence of praising. So we know that the praising God is the best thing we can do as human beings. And how we praise God is by prizing Him, is by treasuring Him above all else, is by serving Him even though He doesn't need it because we love Him. We want to show and put on display our love for Him. Man, I love that. So, so let me ask you this question, and then we will go into the activity for today. We'll, we'll be done. Like I said, it's going to be a short video. What motivates you to serve? Think about it. Like, like, like why, why do I serve? Like, let, let's get behind the outward appearance of, of you know, may, maybe a lot of us might say, well, because, you know, I, I want to serve the church, or because my mom makes me, or, you know, something like that. Like, let's, get, let's get really behind our intentions. Let's think about it. Be honest with ourselves. Why do we serve? What, what motivates you to serve? Now, now let me give you six motivations from Scripture. Now, we could turn to all these and, and parse through them and study them deeply, but because I want you guys to be able to do this activity about helping you find ways to serve, then we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to read them off to you. You have to trust me that they're there. If you don't trust me and you'd like the verses, email me, Matthew at discoverrevo.com, and I will send them to you if you don't trust me. Here's those six. Number one, obedience. Number two, gratitude. Number three, gladness. Number four, serving out of your identity as being forgiven. That's a little more complicated one. It's your identity of being forgiven. Number five, humility. And number six, love. Obedience, gratitude, gladness, identity, humility, and love. Those are six motivations in Scripture as to why we can serve, why we should serve, and why we do serve. As you think about this activity that we're going to do about how to plug in, how to serve, let one of those six motivations be the driving force. And if it's not, if all six of those are like thrown out the window in your mind and you're like, shoot, I don't, I don't serve for any six of those reasons, that's fine. Ask God, say, make it true of me that I would serve you out of obedience, out of gratitude, out of gladness, out of my identity, out of humility, and out of love. And I promise that as, as we do that, as we serve the Lord, as we do it out of those six motivations, not because He needs it, but because we need it, it'll become a delight and a joy to us. Now, now go do that assignment. It's going to be really fun. Hopefully help you find some ways to plug in and serve in your community and in your church.